الدكتور سامع هيبي ابو زيد هيتكلمنا على السي تي دي مانجمنت اوف سي تي دي اسوشيتد اجين انا سامح حلو ابو زيد Just a fast trip through the past to do the history of chronic kidney disease and anemia. Professor Richard Wright was the first to observe that anemia was a complication of renal failure. Professor Robert Christensen, a few years later, further described renal anemia. More than 100 years later, Professor Miyaki verified and identified the original protein. While Professor Ben Bach, by the 2nd of December 1985, was the first human use. Four years later, in 1989, the FDA approval of erythropoietin was established. Despite anemia, the disease is a product is a predominantly a non-cyclic chronic anemia. We find it to be uh, microcytic, microphonic, hypochromic anemia in most of our patients due to the iron deficiency. At every chronic kidney disease stage, is high prevalence and the more pronounced severity of renal anemia is found. NK3 was done on 16,000 patients to show the prevalence of anemia, which increased from 1% at a gametic filtration rate of 60 ml per minute to 9% at 30 ml per minute and 33% at 15 ml per minute. The anemia and chronic consequences. The reduced oxygen delivery to tissues has an adverse impact on organ function, particularly in patients with chronic organ dysfunction. The increased risk for faster progression of renal failure, the ischemic adverse events in patients with congestive heart failure and chronic artery disease. The reduced brain and cognitive function, the reduced quality of life, and the increased left ventricular hypertrophy and left ventricular dilatation. This is the effect of when gram fallen hemoglobin level. We see the effect on mostly the systolic dysfunction and the left ventricular dilatation. There's a relative increase in risk 1.55 in the systolic dysfunction and the left ventricular dilatation of 1.49%. The potential causes of anemia and chronic kidney disease patients are decreased erythropoietin production, the shortened red blood cell survival, the iron deficiency, the inhibition of erythropoiesis, the malnutrition and other deficiencies, and the chronic inflammation. What are the major components of erythropoiesis? So we're going to talk about the endogenous, endogenous erythropoietin, which is a glycoprotein hormone produced in the kidneys predominantly by the peritubular fibroblasts. The EPO acts on the buffer forming unit erythroid and the colony forming erythroid cells, causing them to proliferate and mature. Without EPO, the colony forming erythroid cells undergo a self coding process, which is called as apoptosis. When without the EPA, the young circulating RBCs, the neocytes are actively destructed to be neocytolysis. This diagram shows the erythropoietin cycle and the effect on the, of the erythropoietin on the, on the, on the three proliferative, uh, proliferative steps, the first forming unit erythroid and the colony forming erythroid and the proerythroblasts. This cycle takes about eight days without the iron, the, the iron which acts on the erythroblasts to help them proliferate to the reticulocytes. Another major component of erythropoiesis is iron, where only 5 to 10 percent of our dietary iron is absorbed daily. That's because our main constituent of diet is 80, uh, is the nine heap iron, which is 85 to 90 percent of the diet, while heap iron constitutes only 10 to 15 percent of the diet which is the readily absorbed E. The free iron is toxic, so it's always bind to a transferrin. The transferrin is the protein that carries the iron. The transferrin is bound on cells to the transferrin receptor, which has a high concentration on the liver cells and the erythroid precursor cells. The numerous markers of iron status. The 
ferritin, which denotes the iron store, the transferase saturation, which denotes the iron supply, while the percentage of hypochromic red blood cells and the hemoglobin content of particular sites indicate the iron supply in bone marrow, the CRP indicating inflammation, the HEPs and the iron store, iron supply from the store. What's the difference between functional iron deficiency and absolute iron deficiency? We all know the absolute iron deficiency where iron stores are depleted with a low serum ferritin and the decreased transferrin saturation. While the functional iron deficiency, the iron stores are adequate, but the iron is not provided to developing erythroblasts rapidly enough. How this happens? The rapid increase in erythropoiesis induced by recombinant human e demands a large amount of iron from the small plasma transferrin pool. This drains iron from the intracellular labile pool. This happens within hours of giving a dose of recombinant EPO. The draining of labile pool results in hypochromia, decreasing amount of hemoglobin both in reticular sites and RBCs. Intravenous iron therapy is necessary. What are the guideline iron targets in chronic kidney disease? We found that the KDO key 2006 and the European Best Practice Guidelines 2008 share the same guidelines. With the serum ferritin, is over 100 in non dialysis patients and over 200 in dialysis patients, and not routinely over 500 micrograms per liter. And they agreed also that the transferrin saturation is more or equal than 20%. Monitoring. Hemoglobin levels should be monitored on a monthly basis, at least in patients treated with ESA. Iron status monitoring. Iron status should be regularly assessed for optimal management of anemia of chronic kidney disease. The iron status should be monitored monthly during the initial ESA therapy and every three months during the stable ESA therapy. The oral versus iron, IV iron therapy. Oral iron is not effective as the peripheral iron in hemodialysis and chronic kidney disease patients. The causes are mild iron absorption and the lack of compliance due to the gastrointestinal effects. The existing IVI preparations and the investigation of iron preparations. We have now the ferrogyl and the iron sucrose. The ferrogyl is used in the hemodialysis patients receiving ESAs and the iron sucrose in the hemodialysis patients and the peripheral dialysis and the chronic kidney disease patients. The investigation of iron pre preparations are the ferrogyl oxytol, the semi-synthetic polysaccharide coated iron oxide. This is an oral iron, by the way. The VIT45 is the carboxy maltose injection and the ferric pyrophosphate, the most promising is the dialysate with concentrate containing ferric pyrophosphate and the iron oligosaccharides IV iron. What about the ESAs? Almost all chronic kidney disease patients without iron deficiency, inflammation or infection have an appropriate erythropoietic response to the exogenous evil. Other anemia forms may coexist in chronic kidney disease, iron foliate and vitamin B12, chronic blood loss from the gastrointestinal tract, blood drawing, and the hemodialysis technique itself. What did we do in the pre ESAN era? We had androgens that increased the sensitivity of erythroid progenitors to EPO effects and prolonged the red blood cell survivals. It had the side effects of realization, liver function test abnormalities, and increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. The red blood cell transfusions, it's used to ameliorate symptoms in end stage renal disease rapidly, but it had more rapid significant complications, like as the transfusion transmitted infections, the immunologic sensitization, iron overload, syndrome, body overload, and transfusion reactions. The ESA treatment, the ESA was produced by a gene transfer to suitable mammalian cell lines, approved in 1989 by the FDA for treatment of anemia associated with chronic kidney disease. The EPO is a genetic term that encompasses all genetically produced forms of EPO of erythropoietin. The currently available and future forms of erythropoietic agents for treatment of end stage renal disease. The unmodified EPO, the short acting and the long acting ESAs, the EPO analogs, the biosimilars, and the investigational ESAs. 
This table compares the four available pieces, the protein alpha and beta, the dark protein alpha and the serum. The protein alpha and beta almost share the same uh, characteristics and they are administered one to three times weekly, while the dark protein alpha is the longer active one. It is given every one to two weeks and the serum is the longest, which is administered every two to four weeks. The investigation that eases. The hematite is a synthetic peptide based erythropoietin receptor agonist with no structure homology to erythropoietin. It activates erythropoietin receptor and stimulates erythropoiesis. The hypoxic inducible factor stabilizes the orally active anti anemic therapy, increases endogenous EPR production by preventing proteosome mediated HIF predation. The FDA has suspended any further clinical trials with the hypoxia inducible factor stabilizer as a female patient developed fatal hepatic necrosis. The recommended target hemoglobin levels. We see also again that the KDOC in 2006 and the European Best Practice Guidelines share the same guidelines than the last two eras. The, the, the target hemoglobin level was 13, it was, uh, the, 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 was 11 to 12 in both the Kidoki 2006 and the European Best Practice Guideline 2009 and caution when maintaining the hemoglobin over 13. The recommended EPO dose was only specific in the European Best Practice Guidelines with a starting dose of 50 to 150 international units per kilogram which is equivalent to 4,000 to 8,000 international units per week. The important risks of ESA use hypertension, thrombosis, anti-hepo-mediated pure cell aplasia, and the ESA-associated tumor progression. The ESA-induced hypertension happens in 25 to 35 of EPO-treated patient patients. Additional antihypertensive therapy often required, but discontinuation, discontinuation of the EPO normally not needed. Attaining an organ model level does not confer an added risk for hypertension. The ESA induced thrombosis. ESA treatment increases hematocrit blood viscosity, so it increases the risk of vascular or gram thrombosis. Higher incidence of axis thrombosis with the normal hemoglobin levels. Increase in thrombotic events has been noted in patients with malignancy who have received ESAs. The ESA induced pure cell aplasia. It's associated with a profound, profound hemoglobin, the fallen hemoglobin level and the reticulocyte count. It is diagnosed by bone marrow aspirate with demonstration of severe erythroid hypoplasia. Anti EPO antibodies demonstrated by rate immunoassay, higher sensitivity and specificity than ELISA. The person management, transfusions of symptomatic anemia and ESA discontinuation, the immunosuppressive therapy and the subcutaneous injection of hematite is under trial. The ESA induced tumor progression. The cancer patients' observational trial showed more rapid cancer progression and reduced survival in the ESA treated patients, especially in the head and neck and breast cancer patients, while in renal patients, no evidence that treatment of renal anemia results in higher rates of malignant tumors. So we have to weigh between the risks and benefits of using ESAs or not to compare between the quality of life, avoidance of transfusions against signal concerning malignancy, higher cerebrovascular accidents, and the thrombotic effects. The ESA hyper-responsiveness. It's the requirement of excessive doses during initiation of the ESA therapy, or the inability to achieve or maintain a target volume of 11 gram per deciliter despite large hypodoses in none in an iron replete patient. The recommendations to achieve a model of 10 to 11, the KDOKI clinical practice guidelines, is to use for 150 units per kilogram per week IV or 300 units per kilogram per week subcutaneous EPO, that's of the short acting, or the revised European practice guidelines to use 300 units per kilogram per week IV or 1.5 microgram per week dark between alpha, which is equivalent to 100 microgram per week. Causes of EPO resistance, the IM deficiency, infection, inflammation, under dialysis, poor adherence, 
other deficiencies as B12, folate, thyroxin, and severe hyperparathyroidism, while aluminum toxicity is no longer a significant cause of partial PCR resistance. At the same time, some patients of ACE inhibitors or ARBs and may require higher ESA doses, while primary bone marrow disorders should be investigated by bone marrow investigations only if all other causes have been excluded. Conclusions. ESAs have become the mainstay of anemia and treatment in end-stage renal disease. The traditional recombinant human erythropoietin, second generation erythropoietin analogs including darbiputin, alpha and sera, as well as biosimilar erythropoietins are currently available. The search goes on for an only active anti-anemic drug. In end-stage renal disease observational studies reveal a strong positive correlation between severity of anemia and the risk of poor outcome. In end-stage renal disease correction of renal anemia under ESA treatment reduced morbidity, mortality and hospitalization. Integration of ESA and IVI therapy into standard anemia management resulted in a target hemoglobin level in vast majority of end-stage patients. The data suggests that treating chronic kidney disease patients to a hemoglobin level more than 30 can be harmful and a target of 10 to 12 gram per deciliter seems to be reasonable, but increasing ESA dose in hyper-responsive patients to achieve a specific target is accepted. While each patient should be treated according to hemoglobin target with the lowest effective ESA dose, Avoid large fluctuations in hemoglobin levels or prolonged period outside the hemoglobin target. Most important complications in ESA treated patients are hypertension, thrombosis, and the pure cell aplasia. Despite great success of ESAs in their clinical practice, ESA resistance and ESA hyperresponsiveness are a still common clinical problem.